Hey, what's good? It's Richard from Weed City Soul here, and we are here to do a performance review on the Nike LeBron. Hey, what's good? It's Richard from Weed City Soul here, and we're here to do a performance review on the Nike LeBron 12. Now, LeBron himself wasn't a huge fan of the Nike LeBron 11. He spent most of the season wearing the Zoom Soldier 7. And I can see why. The LeBron 11 didn't bring a lot of new innovations to the table. They took a lot of technologies they already had and just kind of jammed it all into one shoe. And it didn't end up working for a lot of people. And it definitely didn't end up working for LeBron. The LeBron 12 flips the script and brings a few new technologies to the table, namely Nike's Hex Zoom technology and a Mega Fuse construction on the upper. So let's take a look at the shoe. We're going to start here with the cushioning system. Nike has implemented their hex zoom technology, which is individually placed hexagonally shaped zoom air units. These units allow for a more flexible and fluid ride while still cushioning your foot through your foot strike. In the heel, you can see a large volume zoom airbag. You can see how much this airbag juts out from the bottom of the shoe, and it's actually quite responsive. However, it's unfortunate that I don't think a lot of people are looking for a super responsive heel feel in their basketball shoes. Now in the forefoot, while these shoes provide great impact protection and a great court feel, these bags themselves aren't very responsive. You're not going to get a lot of spring feel from them. But you are going to feel surprisingly low to the court for a LeBron shoe. Onto the traction, you can see that each of the individual Zoom airbags has a snowflake-like pattern on it, while the outside edges and the lateral outriggers have a similar but more spaced out pattern. The traction is actually quite good and it does make that oh-so-sweet squeaking sound that you like to hear when you're moving around the court. I myself really like having that audible feedback to let me know my traction is working. Now it's not herring bone, so you'll have to wipe every once in a while, but indoors on a clean court, these are excellent. Onto the upper, the shoe features Megafuse construction. Megafuse is just another iteration of Nike's Hyperfuse technology with overlaying panels made primarily out of glue. The Megafuse upper does a good job keeping the shoe flexible while still keeping your foot supported. The shoe does an odd thing where it feels very mobile yet very heavy duty at the same time. On the side of the shoe, you will see a large hyperposite support wing, the purpose of which is to provide lateral support and to keep your foot situated on the footbed during hard cuts. It runs up through the ankle to provide structure and shape for the shoe while also acting as an external heel counter, although the shoe does also feature an internal heel counter. While the hyperposite wing does a good job providing support, it can cause some discomfort around the midfoot, especially initially as hyperposite is a molding material that will eventually shape to your foot with heat and pressure. During that molding process, you probably will feel some pain, especially around this area. The hyperposite support wing also runs up and through the ankle to provide shape and structure for the shoe, although you're never going to get a particularly snug fit here around the ankle because of the fact that the hyperposite is so firm and is constantly fighting to get back to the shape that it is originally set at. The good news is ankle protection has nothing to do with collar height, shape, or the material a collar is made out of, and everything to do with how well a heel counter locks your foot onto the footbed. A good heel counter is always going to be the best piece of ankle protection you have in a shoe. You can see here that the shoe lacks a traditional tongue and features a one-piece construction. The shoe itself can be a bit of a pain in the ass to put on because of this as the opening isn't very large. However, they do provide a nice sturdy pull tab on the back that has some cool designs on it and some cool details. Each one of the LeBron 12s has an individual detail depending on the colorway on this part of the tab here. Now the most common complaint about the LeBron 12 is that they are a bit difficult to put on and especially difficult to lace up. The lacing system here, as you can see, is simply holes cut directly into the Mega Fuse. These portions here are very difficult to pull through this very sturdy Mega Fuse material. And it can make tightening the shoes to your liking a huge pain in the ass. The shoe also features areas where dynamic fly wire pokes through the Mega Fuse upper to be used as eyelets. Flywire is a yarn-like material that supposedly has the tensile strength of steel. In this implementation, it is meant to flex and move with the foot as needed while providing support the entire way. Luckily, that's something LeBron 12 has in spades is support and structure. The shoe does a fantastic job at keeping you solidly planted on the ground and catching you when there is a misstep. As previously mentioned, the shoe does a great job of remaining flexible despite being so supportive. This is due in part to the segmented outsole, which could have been a clunky disaster in terms of transition while you're running down the court, but the articulated cushioning does a great job at keeping everything smooth. This is aided by a standard TPU mid-shank and a relatively soft file on midsole. 
So I ended up going down a half a size from my regular 10 and a half to a 10 in these because when I put them on in the store, uh, I thought that they felt a little long and a little clunky. Uh, I originally got the shoes for casual wear. I got the Heart of the Lion colorway. And I gave them a shot in the gym one time and I liked them enough that it became my go-to ball shoe and I ended up getting a second pair, the Witness colorway here, because I plan on using them for a long time on court. Now I find that the shoe fits quite well, although there is a bit of an asterisk to that because of the fact that I went down a half a size. It allows the shoe to fit more snugly across my entire foot. Regarding the lacing issue, it's true. This is an exceptionally difficult shoe to lace up. Maybe the most difficult shoe I've ever come across in that area, and I've owned hundreds of pairs of shoes. However, because of that snug fit of me going down half a size, I generally don't touch any of the laces from here to here and the shoe still does a great job of keeping my foot locked in. I've played a little college ball. I'm a point guard. I'm 5'7". I weigh anywhere from 190 to 200 pounds depending on what season it is. And I'm a pretty dense guy so I end up playing a power game. I play really physical defense. I drive to the basket a lot and I spend a lot of time posting up smaller weaker guards. And this shoe does a great job of fitting that power style of game. Um, it's almost like a big man shoe that a guard can wear very comfortably. Uh, it fits LeBron's game a lot better than the 11 did and even the 10, and I thought the 10 was a solid shoe. In my opinion, this is the best performing LeBron ever. Alright, let's get you some on-foot looks of the LeBron 12 Heart of a Lion and the LeBron 12 Witness. So if you're looking for a basketball shoe with exceptional support, great impact protection, and excellent court feel, then the LeBron 12 should be near the top of your list. If you're looking for something light with really responsive cushioning, you're probably going to have to look somewhere else. But this, in my opinion, was easily the most underrated shoe of the season and one of the best performers hands down. This has been a performance review on the Nike LeBron 12. If this has been helpful to you at all, comment, like, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram at Weed City Soul. Until next time, guys, I'm Richard from Weed City Soul, and remember, they're just shoes.